Hello everyone, welcome back again to a wonderful video. So today I'm going to take you into the detailed discussion of the topic that is the best ways to become an assistant professor of biology life sciences in India. So if you are among one and wanted to become an assistant professor and aspiring of entering into this teaching line, so this video is for you where I'm going to take you into the detailed insights of the professor, what are the exams, uh, you can say educational qualification, what is the hierarchy, salary range, and what are the steps to become assistant professor in India. So let's start our video with the very first subheading that is about professor. So firstly, we'll see what is the role of professor and what it is about. So if we see and talk about the professor, you will see professor has many different role in the field of teaching line. The one who teaches subjects and also clears students doubt. Professor is the one who plans license as well as assignment, supervise and guide students for their PhD work and also shares and knowledge, uh, you can say knowledge and expertise among all the students that is under a particular professor. So this is all about the professor role means he is engaged with all the teaching things. He mentors a student for their PhD and all the knowledge and expertise that he has, he is going to share with all their students. Now, what is the minimum eligibility requirements that is needed to become an assistant professor in India? So if you see the requirements that is needed, that is master's degree with minimum aggregate percentage. So if you are aspiring to become assistant professor, at least you should have a master's degree along with the aggregate percentage. Now let's see this aggregate is different for all those who belongs to general category, OBC category, SC and ST. So if you belongs to a general category, means you need a master's degree that is with a minimum aggregate of 55%. But if you are belonging to any of the, you can say reservation category that, that is SC, ST, OBC, PWD or transgenders. So for all these category candidates, the master degree is required along with the minimum aggregate of 50%. So here you can see reservation is there for you and also you need a 50% marks here. So this is just the minimum uh, eligibility criteria that you need to become an assistant professor in India. Now what is the age limit? So here you can see there is no age limit to become an assistant professor as because uh, you can say experience is required and many things are required so there is no age limit to become an assistant professor in India. Coming to the third topic that is about the national level exam. Now there are many different competitive exams that is required to enter into this field. Now let's see the list of examination that is actually required. The first examination that is over here is CSI and NET. Yes you all may be aware about this exam that is taken to check the a candidate competency about the GRF as well as NET. So GRF is basically for researcher or you can say to pursue any kind of research in the field of research, uh, any uh, you can say biotech related topic and the other is NET. NET means is a minimum qualification that is needed to become a professor and this time you need to have the NET certificate. So as you all know the CSI NET exam is one of the way to get an assistant professor certificate and how do we get this because when we are applying for this exam and if we are qualifying that exam we will get that net certificate that will be used you can say as a qualification or eligibility to become a professor in India. Now you know this exam is conducted by NTA that is National Testing Agency and this exam is conducted for a total of five subjects. So firstly you have to choose which subject you want to appear for CSI and so there are five subjects earth sciences, so uh, physical sciences, chemical sciences, life sciences, as well as atmospheric earth sciences. So here you can apply for any of the subjects you are willing to apply. And here you have to fill for GRF and Alice. Suppose if you want to clear GRF, then that time you have to apply for GRF, where if you are qualifying GRF, you will get the LS certificate too. But if you are applying for lectureship only, you will get LS certificate, that means net qualification. And once you are qualifying that net exam, means you are having that qualification, that certificate and on the basis of that certificate you can apply to uh, any of the institute of your choice for this assistant professor position. The next examination is UGC net examination. Again it is conducted by NTA. It is conducted for many different subjects where again you need MSc and at least 55% marks to appear for this examination if you belongs to a general category and reservation we have already seen. Again this exam uh, you can say it is for GRF as well as LS that is net qualification. So once you qualify this GRF you will have LS on net qualification and if you want to apply for net qualification alone so you can apply and on the basis of that you can apply for pro professor position. 
Also, you can write gate examination. Now, once you write gate examination, there will be, you can say, no funding for that research. But if you are qualifying gate, so this gate is actually conducted by ISC Bangalore and jointly by seven IITs. Okay? So gate is scored to pursue PhD. So once you are qualifying this uh, gate, so you need uh, to have a gate score. So better to apply for you can say better to qualify this gate exam with a better score so once you are having that score you can apply to any of the institute of your choice for your phd and now once you are having that phd and you have done your phd means you are doctorate in that field now you can apply for a professor position in uh, any of the iits or nits so make sure if you are qualifying gate that time you need to have your phd and how you will take that phd using that gate score that you have just having and you have qualified gate right and after having that doctoral degree you can go for any of the IITs and NITs of your choice. The fourth over here is SLAT that is state level eligibility test again this is conducted by NTA as you can see that is a state level so that is different for different different states so you have to see for that and appear for this examination so once you are qualifying this examination you will be eligible for assistant professor at state level colleges and universities and all these exams they are national level exams like csi net ugc net as well as gate so these are all about the national level exams means once you qualify this uh, exams after then you will be becoming a assistant professor means you have to go through bachelor's master's then you should clear and qualify this national level exam it can be csi net ugc net state level eligibility test or if you are qualifying gate you have to look for phd on the basis of gate score you will be doing your phd and ultimately you will be entering into this teaching line that is a field of assistant professor now Students may be asking if they don't have any net qualification, but they aspire to become an assistant professor. So what is the other way for becoming a professor in India? So if you don't have any net qualification, no net qualification, what's the other way? So here you need to have PhD. Suppose if you're not having any qualification, so somehow you have to enroll for your PhD. And once you are having your PhD, you will be eligible for becoming an assistant professor. Now here, what is the requirement? You should be a regular PhD student, like you have done your uh, regular PhD. If you are enrolling, you don't have any funding, nothing you have, but still if you are enrolling by some other means, means you should have at least PhD degree. And once you have PhD degree, you are uh, supposed to become this assistant professor. So you have to look for this funding and everything, and after that you will be eligible to become this, or uh, you can say for this post. So what is the requirement that is needed for PhD? You should be a regular PhD student. Evolution of research work will be done by that. At least two external examiner and also evaluation of PhD thesis will be done. And research publication during the PhD tenure. It is mandatory to have the research publication during the mandatory or you can say stop. And it is mandatory to have the research publication during your PhD tenure. And if you are having at least two to three research paper, then you are good to go for this uh, assistant professor job but make sure you are having any kind of funding for your PhD because you are not having any net qualification any national level qualification so you need to enter somehow into any college or university of your choice and need to pursue this PhD and once you are having make sure you are following all these criteria that is you can say that is um, under the UGC norms or you can say assistant professor norms means you should be a PhD regular student Evaluation of research work and your PhD thesis is done by at least two external examiners that is outside that university or institutes. And the third is research publication that is mandatory that you should have at least two to three research paper during your PhD tenure. So this is all about the, or uh, you can say minimum eligibility criteria that you should have means you should have masters, you should have your PhD, you are clearing net qualification and after PhD you will be entering to this stage. And if you don't want to clear PhD and all so just after CSIR qualification or any qualification that we have seen national level qualification state eligibility test so on the basis of that you can just enter it into the field suppose if you are not having any qualification that is net qualification then it is mandatory to have your PhD and somehow you have to look for your PhD everything funding and all and after that you will be eligible to become 
uh, assistant professor. Now, once you enter this post, what are the skill set that is required to get hired? Now, along with that, you should have all these skill set. Now, let's see the skill set that is required to become a professor in India. So, means the very first over years, you should have a passion for teaching. It's not like if someone is forcing you to become an assistant professor and you are uh, applying for this post. No, you should have a passion for teaching, interest and research for a field of interest. Suppose if you are going for a professor line in the field of biology, you should, so you should have all the knowledge and deep uh, insights of all the biological sciences subjects. You should have and you should put new ideas and thoughts for teaching. Suppose if you are teaching to students, that time you should be having some innovative ideas and thoughts so that students can grasp that things very easy. Adaptability and flexibility. You need to be adaptable and flexible to that environment. Also, you should have a positive attitude towards work and what is the soft skill that is needed to become an assistant professor. So here you can see perfect communication because you are going to communicate your things, you are going to teach. So anyways, you should have the perfect communication. You should have the problem solving ability. Suppose if any problems come to you, so you should know how to tackle with all those problems because you will be a professor, right? So you will be in that position. So you should know all these things and also you should know how to manage the time, how to work for your students, how to plan a lesson and assignment, when to teach for them. So everything you have to plan in advance, that is prayer, pl prayer planning is needed. And on the basis of that, you will be selected for this post. So this is all about the soft skill and hard skills that you will need during the assistant professor position. Now let's see the hierarchy and promotions. Now here we are talking about the assistant professor, right? How to become, but it is important to see the hierarchy and promotion. What will be the hierarchy? Suppose if you are having uh, experience in the field of assistant professor post, then what will be your, uh, your next post and what will you become? So let's see the hierarchy and promotions here. So the very first post in the field of teaching line is assistant professor that is followed by associate professor, senior professor or you can say HOD post, professor of eminence, dean, director, pro vice chancellor, vice chancellor and ultimately chancellor. But we are talking about this post. So what will be the salary range if you are appointed for this post? So the average salary will be INR 5.67 lakhs per annum. So you can see this is about the average salary. So here we are talking about the average salary that varies to institute to institute or you can say city to city. So it depends on the type of cities you are enrolling yourself as a assistant professor or you can say for this post. So it totally depends on the city as well as the type of institute you are at getting in. And ultimately you can see the average salary is here. So it will be near about five to six lakhs you can say. After you gain experience, you will be eligible to become an associate professor and you can see the salary is 8.49 lakhs per annum. That is followed by HOD and the salary you can see 11.09 lakhs per annum. So this way hierarchy will get increased like once you are qualifying for this assistant professor means you are having any kind of experience for two to three years, five years and then you will be upgraded to associate associate professor, HOD, professor of eminence, dean director and ultimately pro vice chancellor. So this is the later thing. Firstly, you have to qualify the, for this post and after that you will be eligible for associate professor. So you can see I have mentioned the salary details for all. So if you want to check, you can just check. And this is very important. That is the INR 5.6 lakhs per annum. That is the average salary range for assistant professor. So this is all about the hierarchy and positions that you are seeing here. Now, what are the steps and guidance that you need to go through to become eligible for this post? Firstly, you need to select a combination of subject, like in which subject you wanted to become a professor, be it life sciences, physical sciences, chemical sciences. So you have to select a subject for your choice. Once you are selecting, you need to prepare for the competitive exams. Like I've mentioned different competitive exams. You need to prepare either for CSI net, UGC net, whether it is slight or gate. So you need to prepare for any one of the competitive exam. And if you are qualifying the combination of subject, that will be really good for you. And after that, you need to qualify that exam. So once you are uh, preparing and after that you are qualifying means you are eligible to take your PhD degree, then you have to go for earning a right degree means earning a right degree here means it is talking about PhD. Now you have to look for the best universities and college or institution that is offering PhD position and once you are done with your PhD, now you can get into any college or university of your interest.
So means after you have your PhD degree means you are a doctorate in suppose if if you have done your PhD in biological sciences means you are a doctorate in biological sciences now you have to look for a professor or assistant professor post in any of the college or in in university that deals with the biological sciences or if you want to uh, teach particularly for a subject let's say molecular biology genetics so you can be appointed for that case also but here you need to select the college or university that is specifically deals with your subject in which you have qualified the examination and also you are having the phd degree so this is all about the ways and details about how to become an assistant professor in india where we have seen what do you understand by professor and once you become the professor what will be your role and also we have seen the minimum eligibility requirements that is needed to become a professor we have seen what all national level exams we need to qualify if you are not having any net qualification then what to do also we have seen what skills you should have once you are uh, applying for this professor and also we have seen hierarchy and promotions what will be your next post and how you will be promoted what will be the salary range we have also seen the average salary range for the assistant professor and ultimately we have seen guidance and steps how you need to enter into the field of assistant professor so this is all about the topic and i am sure ki all those who are aspiring to become the assistant professor so this video was really beneficial for all of you so if you like the video do not forget to like share and subscribe to our channel that is biotechnica thank you everyone for watching this session Keep learning. Bye-bye.